This is awesome. Oh gosh, I didn't stop doing that. Today we are winterizing the RV park and we're actually a day too late because of what happened yesterday. Whoa, this is awesome. Heard some water from walking up there. We have guests here. I'm like three days away from winterizing the RV park and last night got too cold and busted the pipe right here. I can fix it, I just gotta shut off water for all our guests. Sweet! Thankfully, the guests that we had were really cool about it. We opened up the nightly cabin because no one was staying in it last night for all of them to use the showers and bathrooms there. But I went underneath the foundation to make sure the cabin could handle freezing temperatures and this is what I found. Welcome to under the cabin. All right, the light's on. We don't want those pipes to freeze underneath, so that's good. How's everything else looking good? What is this water? Why do we have water here? Oh, why is there water here? Oh. Oh, nice. Got a fan here. Okay. Okay. And the water here. I really don't know why we have water. Oh, shoot. Oh, just came to see if the heat tape was on. I don't know where that water's coming from. So yeah, I spent the entire night underneath the house. This is how that went. I went and got this. Why? Because it has a light and I'm gonna need that for under the house. Okay, that's much better. I'm glad I thought of that. If you guys saw in our other video, this has a 30 amp connection. Right here, 30 amp connection for RVs. But I'm testing out the light tonight goes brighter. Oh yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna find the problem. You. It doesn't smell like sewage. Thank goodness. It's late at night. I just wanted to eat ice cream and go to bed and wake up and finish the rest of winterizing in the RV park. It's much less than I thought it was because this is a big bulge. <clears throat> but it's insulation. It's probably wet. Ins that's what it is. It's wet insulation weighing it down. It's gonna be fun. It's not rotted. That's good. It's not wet. Weird. Three hours later. There's literally no plumbing right here. We're gonna find this. I should be sleeping. <sighs> There's no pipes. I ran all the, the tub, the toilet, the sinks, had them plugged, flushed them all at the same time. No more water came through from that. And you find a little problem, you want to get it fixed before it becomes a big problem. Also, this light is freaking amazing. The four AC outlets right there. It's got the RV hookup here, 30 amp. You got car sockets, DC outputs here. I've been out here for a long time with it on full blast with the light and uh, it's still 88%. When you need to be under a house in the underbelly, finding where the leak is comes in clutch. So I didn't realize that there's two layers here and all the water is in between the layers. Why is there water in between the two layers? If you know what I should be doing or you know the answer to why this is happening, please comment below. This is an ongoing process. I'm, we're just open about this entire RV park build. We've been nervous about sharing things in the past because it's like, oh, this is broken. Do we tell people? It's like, yeah, because then we fix it and things break all the time and we'll fix it, obviously. Insulation's dry. And so I was stoked about that, but in between the two tarps is where there's a lot of moisture. Normally at this point, I would call my dad and he would have the answer. So um, if you know the answer, okay now that it's the next day i should probably get on with my other to-dos i'm just kidding i didn't sleep under there that'd be too scary so what i think is happening there is not any moisture build up in this section nor in this one over here so the two bordering sections there's not moisture it's just wet in between these two layers i think i got wet 
is outside here, the siding, there's some exposed wall where you see the house wrap. Some of the siding has come off or broken and we got a ton of rain and moisture. It probably collected there and came down and then got into this. So what I'm gonna do right now is tape up this first layer, give time for the rest to drip out and dry out and see if more moisture comes. Especially when there's rain, I'm gonna watch it and see if that's what it is and then source where the leak is coming. For now, we'll just tape up the first layer and see what happens. You wanna know what's crazy? We just got another review on our RV park from a family that stayed a few days ago. Really sweet review. He sent me a personal message after and said, thank you so much. You're living our dream right now. And I saw that right before having to crawl back under this house <laughs> and doing this. One thought I had immediately with that was, oh, you really want this? Is this your dream? You wanna be under a house right now with all the cobwebs and spiders and digging through insulation? And... But then the other side of it is, he's right. This is a dream that we had, that we're now living. And I need to embrace it. This is me embracing it. Anyone who's ever living your dream, just know that as much of the dream you see, there is so much struggle and frustration and pain behind it. But that's not a negative outlook. That's just a, hopefully to fire you up. Go work hard, go after your dreams, and recognize that every dream takes work. I'm grateful for that message. I am. Not that I'm like in a bad mood or ungrateful right now, but I have a lot of moments where I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I guess it also shows that you don't really know how hard it is until you're doing something, but it's supposed to be hard too. Even when you're living the dream, there's supposed to be hard in there. If you're still alive, you're supposed to be going through hard, at least every once in a while. And the hard doesn't always last, but it's there because the purpose of this life is to get better to improve, and that doesn't happen without the struggle. Also, you've seen us talk about Anchor Sulks before. This thing is so durable, I use it all the time. For RVs, plugging it in, we've let guests use it when they're dry camping. Hi. Hi. Anchor Sulks has a Black Friday sale going on, so they're a partner in this channel. We really appreciate them, and we thought we'd let you guys know that they have that Black Friday sale going on so that you could benefit from their products. Go ahead and check out the link below this video. Such a durable product. I had this on all last night. And look, 80% right now. So yeah, check out the link and thank you Anchor Solix for being a partner on this channel. Now I'm gonna get out of this hole. We need to move this. It weighs like a million pounds. Millie found this on Facebook Marketplace. Oh my gosh. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> Where am I taking this? My fingers hyperextend so bad. So when I lift or twist or do anything, like, look at this. Like my fingers, my thumb, holding anything, they just bend. It sucks, and Bryce's fingers are solid. Got some nice wood there. Thanks. Funny story about this couch. Bryce actually found it on the side of the road. Because we're poor, and when you go have your construction loan at the RV park, you do that. Before we got married, the bishop in my church, he's like, uh, so marriage advice? Don't buy anything big, purchase anything big without your spouse's consent. He said, one day I surprised my wife with a truck, a new truck. Didn't go over very well. The biggest purchase I've made without Nelly's consent is this lawnmower. But it's not a truck, and aren't you happy we have it? Actually, I do love it so much. It always takes me a second. <laughs> you gotta move this whole pile of scrap wood. <laughs> Are you fixing my lawnmower for me? Yeah. Oh my goodness, show me how you're going to fix it. You it in here. Uh huh. And you fix it over here. And, and then you can drive it? We 
are packed up. We have the RV. Well, Bryce is packing up all the yucky yeah. stuff. But we've done, I think, a pretty good job today at the RV park. Everything, all the pipes are blown out. Picnic benches are put away. Just things that needed to be done. We still have a few things we need to do, come back and do. But other than that, I think the RV park is good to go for the winter. Oh, man, Look how beautiful that is behind us. Yeah, oh, and the mountain is too. So the bad news, guys, is we are shutting down the RV spots this winter. But the good news, that cabin's open. And then the tiny home is going to be open. Amazing experiences. You can come out here. There's going to be so many deer, like whitetail hang out here, elk hang out here in the winter. And if you want to come for Christmas, let us know. I will make that so Christmassy for you. You'll love it. Yeah. And if you're a ski instructor or snowboard instructor or guide or anything for the winter, great place to be. You ready to take off, Indy? We got to go. <laughs> so we are getting this baby ready to go on the road. We're going to take it on a big road trip. We're going to be RVers again. So excited for that. But we're going to do it differently because now we have all the solar install up top. And we have the Anchor Solix F2000 that I was using underneath the house as I was fixing that. We can actually boondock. We can hang out. We can go and just camp in the middle of the nowhere. Hey, Nels. Yeah. Turn on the AC. Compressor just kicked on. There we go. So this is powering our fridge and the air conditioner. That's awesome. It's working! It's working! We loved having all of you at the park this year. Thank you so much for coming out to the Park of Swan Valley, being our friends, enjoying this beautiful valley with us. And don't forget, right now you can book for next season. We were full all of June, July, August. We were full. And then we were like 90% capacity the other month. So go ahead and book now if you know your dates to come out here. It's a perfect place as a base for the Tetons to have fun, adventure, whitewater rafting, biking, horseback riding, all the stuff. So you can do it on the website at parkaswanvalley.com. We love you guys. Oh man. Let's do it. <laughs> 